The Looney Tunes are back in their classic short format on HBO. I personally rather like the sitcom take of the Looney Tunes show from some years back, but it is good to see some more stuff in the style of the classic shorts. And it's been done quite faithfully from what I can tell so far. Everybody's favorites are back! Bugs, Daffy, Porky, Elmer, and even some slightly more obscure characters have appeared. You know, the ones that don't usually get to show up on box sets. Like this guy. As you silly bitch, that's Wiley Coyote. He's not obscure, he's one of the most famous- <laughs> That's right, despite the similarities, this is not in fact Wiley Coyote you're looking at right now. This is Ralph the Wolf, star of the somewhat lesser known Looney Tunes short series Ralph Wolf and Sam Sheepdog, created in 1953 by the legendary Chuck Jones. In each of the seven shorts that were produced, Ralph attempts to steal sheep from Sam's flock in hilarious ways with the help of a number of gadgets, not unlike Wiley Coyote chasing the Roadrunner. Except he gets the shit beaten out of him by Sam just as often as he screws up on his own. And as an extra gag to give the series its own spin, the whole thing was treated as their day job, complete with clocking in and out of their shifts and sharing pleasantries over lunch breaks. It's a funny premise and the shorts do have their fans and their place in popular culture, but it never quite reached the same level of fame as many other classic Looney Tunes characters. So how the hell a PS1 game got made about them back in 2001? I have no goddamn idea. I've already talked about the wonder that was PlayStation 1 demo discs back in my Muppet Monster Adventure video, and one of the other game demos from those discs I remember playing over and over again was Looney Tunes Sheep Raider, developed by Infogrames Lionhouse. Or Sheep, Dog and Wolf as it was called in Europe, which I personally think is a way better title. The demo only had one of the first levels of the game, but I adored the cartoony aesthetic, its hilarious slapstick and just the overall idea, but I never actually played the full game as a child. Well, I've since gotten my hands on the full game, so with Looney Tunes on people's minds lately, let's give it a go and see if my fond childhood memories are justified. So let's begin with a story, or whatever little there is of it anyway. Ralph comes home exhausted from yet another day of work and tries to slump down in front of his TV when suddenly none other than Daffy Duck himself appears acting as a sleazy TV producer. He promptly declares Ralph the contestant of a TV show called Sheep, Dog and Wolf, which is all about stealing all of Sam's sheep one by one in new challenging environments each time with the use of gadgets supplied by the show. And so, off Ralph goes to finally have a bit of success in his sheep stealing endeavors. That's it. That's the whole thing. It's silly, it's stupid, it's cartoony, and it's perfect. You really don't need more than this to justify what is essentially a series of cartoon gags. Plus, the premise allows it to take place in a lot of other places than just an open meadow, so, you know, I approve. I also absolutely love how the game's main level hub is actually the set of the game show, meaning you can see the camera, the lights, and even a crowd of other classic Looney Tunes characters. And their army of clones! I have mixed feelings about this. I kind of feel like Looney Tunes, of all things, has plenty more characters they could put in the audience rather than resort to looping, but hey. Judging from how static they are, I'm starting to think they're supposed to be cardboard cutouts, and it's just part of the joke of how shitty the show is. I really don't know. And I'm sure you've all noticed by now, but for PS1, this game looks pretty great. Now, granted, the PS2 had already come out by this point and was wowing everyone with its graphics, and I'm not gonna pretend the character models aren't so low poly they look like they were carved out of wood, but for PS1 standards, the recreation of the classic Looney Tunes aesthetic is spot on. I mean, just look at these bright, bold backgrounds. Don't those hills just make you feel like you're in a Roadrunner cartoon? Sound and character animation is excellent as well. Not only did they get all the official voices of every character that makes a guest appearance, which is just awesome, but every sound effect is snappy, cartoony and sharp and really put you in a slapstick mood. And just look at how Ralph walks, runs, swims and sneaks around on his tippy toes when he hides in bushes. It's glorious. Yes, hiding in bushes. I haven't mentioned yet that this is a stealth puzzle game, have I? Well, stealth puzzle platformer in certain areas, but yes. I mean, just look at Ralph hiding in this bush trying not to get spotted by Sam. This is basically Middle Gear Bobbit over here. The gameplay and overall goal of each stage is simple. You start out with nothing but a map of the area and have to pick up the stage's predetermined items, which you summon by ordering them by mail, which is pretty funny, that will help you solve the puzzles as you make your way towards Sam's field. Once there, you'll then need to figure out a way to lure the sheep away without Sam spotting you and beating the crap out of you. This is indicated with this neat little Sam meter. The background color indicates whether or not you're in his field of vision, while the direction his head is turning determines whether he's looking directly at you. So if the background is green, you're fine, he can't see you. If it's orange, you're in danger of being spotted if you aren't careful. And if it's red, he runs at you like the motherfucking Terminator! Run! Run for your life! Anyway, let's take a brief look at the basic controls and see what we're dealing with here. 
For the most part, you have very basic platforming controls. That is, you run and jump, and you even have a good old-fashioned double jump. It's a little weird how square is your jump button while you use X to interact with objects, but it's no biggie, you get used to it fast. You can also put Ralph into sneak mode by holding R1 and briefly see the game in first person mode with the triangle button. To add to this, you can access your inventory with the L1 button, which opens a quick and nifty little wheel to cycle through your available items. You can also use select to open a map screen and see where you get certain items, and even read little descriptions of what your items do, so that's cool for the occasional hint. You can also control the camera with R2 and L2, but this is one of the game's weaker points as it tends to zoom in at random or get stuck on objects in the level. It's not a super huge problem and it's far from the worst camera I've ever seen in a game, but it can be annoying. And don't worry, if my explanation doesn't cut it, the game does start with a tutorial level that teaches you the ropes, so let's play that one really quick. Extended use of this game can drive even the most serious people crazy. Hmm, noted. Hmm, actually on second thought, I have some laundry I should be doing, so we'll probably do this later. Hold on, let me just, uh... Well, I guess I have to keep playing no matter what. We warned ya to start, cross the starting line. Me, me. Let this image be an indicator of the kind of trouble you will face during this game. Oh look! The actual tutorial is taught by Daffy wearing his famous Robin Hood Daffy costume. That's awesome! He also introduces you to one of the coolest features of the game. A cartoony dash run that is triggered by tapping the circle button, which lets you cross small gaps. That you never encounter anywhere outside of this tutorial level. Oops. Alright then, we're all learned up, so let's go catch some sheep. The great thing about this game is that the puzzles really do require you to think like a cartoon character. While you have common items like heads of letters you can use to lure sheep towards you, almost every level has unique items or, at the very least, new ways to use an item you got acquainted with in an earlier level, and sometimes they even have multiple uses within the level itself. But usually in very slapsticky, silly ways, rather than being realistically plausible. Now that might sound simple, and it is, but if you have trouble adjusting to a cartoony mindset, you can actually find yourself stumped very often and potentially get very frustrated. I'll be the first to admit that I tend to overthink puzzles in video games, and I personally blame Silent Hill for giving me lifelong puzzle PTSD when I was like 12, but man, there were a lot of times where I got seriously irritated because I just could not for the life of me figure out what to do. Like here, in one of the earliest levels. I used a rocket to cross this large gap and found an elastic band that you use as a bungee cord to perform certain tasks. But then I realized that I had to go back to the other side of the gap to get another item I needed, and I just could not figure out how to get back there since the gap was too wide for my dash to work. I ran around for ages trying to find some hidden ramp or platform or something, until I realized you can tie the rubber band between these two trees and use it to slingshot yourself, and your sheep once you catch it, back to the other side. Another good example of multiple cartoony uses of the same item would be the propeller. In one early stage, you use it to blow at some female sheep perfume to lure a male sheep to you from a distance. And then in a later level, when you get a propeller again, you have to use it as a little motor to get a raft to move across water. I know, I know. You must think I'm a complete idiot for getting stumped by simple puzzles like that, but believe me, this is just the tip of the iceberg. It gets way more complicated as it goes along. At first the puzzles are super simple. Make a trail of letters, distract Sam for a moment, use the perfume. But as you progress, things get way more creative. Sam starts switching up his sheep guarding strategies, and you find yourself sneaking past a sleeping bull through a maze made from dry noisy leaves, using toy robots to grab things for you, traveling through time to plant trees in strategic locations, navigating through minefields, the list just goes on and on. And almost every level will require you to take one extra step in progressively longer, more convoluted plans, which really helps making you feel like you're part of an over-the-top cartoon. You know what? Let me give you an example of just how crazy the game can get. Let's have ourselves a little walkthrough for one of my favorite levels in the game, level 9. Oh yeah, before I go on, that's actually a minor gripe. None of the levels have names or even intro graphics, just a loading screen with a map. I feel like a game that otherwise has so much Looney Tunes flair could stand to have some creative level titles, or maybe even some drawn title cards a la old school cartoons, but oh well, it's a minor thing. Anyway, level 9, step 1. Cross a series of time mines on platforms, making sure to disarm some on the way and bringing them with you for later. 
Step 2. Grab a bungee cord and use it to descend to the ground. Hold on to the vines down there with your feet and reach this mailbox to summon another item. Then let go of the vines to bounce back up and use the cord on another tree to safely fetch your new item, a remote control, from the minefield it landed in. Oh, and you have to do all of this fast so the alligator down there doesn't eat you. Never smile at a crocodile. Step 3. Find this robot near Sam's field and get it onto the cliff using the nearby seesaw, then use the remote control to make it summon another item, which turns out to be a rabbit costume. Step 4. Put on the rabbit costume and set this sign to duck season, a great homage to one of the most famous Looney Tunes shorts, before sneaking across the field. And then get your ass shot by Elmer Fudd when Daffy comes over and changes the sign mid-sneak. Oops. Of course you realize, this means war. Step 5. Turn the sign to duck season and plant a landmine to fuck Daffy over when he tries to change it. Then cross Sam's field using the bunny costume so he doesn't recognize you. Step 6. Climb up the cliff behind him, tie yourself to the tree and activate the robot again. Take the robot to the little lettuce field so it gets caught on this bear trap, which Sam then goes to investigate. Use this time to jump down, grab onto the vines, reach the sheep, grab the sheep, bounce back and get ready to chow down on a sexy little leg of lamb! <laughs> It's an awesomely layered puzzle, it uses every item in a new way, it lets you interact with classic characters, and most importantly, it's just really funny! Ah yes, that's the big question with a Looney Tunes game. Is it funny? And yes, it really really can be. On top of the wacky puzzles and Daffy's dialogue, you get a few encounters with other Looney Tunes characters, such as luring Yosemite Sam into a jail cell with a trail of gold coins at one point, which is hilarious. And sometimes the game just screws with you for a laugh. And I love it when games use their gameplay to have a direct effect on the players themselves. So, here's a couple of my favorite examples. Another fun gag is in level 8, where you have a time travel gimmick. Here you can find the Looney Tunes monster Gossamer in the past, who will try to catch you. It then turns out that you actually had to lure him back into the present with you, so his red fur can distract the bull that gave you trouble in an earlier level, letting you have a moment of sweet revenge on both. But my favorite joke happens in level 5. In level 4, you have to use a magic flute that hypnotizes Sam in order to lead him away from the flock. And right as you start level 5, sure enough, there's the flute again. So you move ahead, you find Sam's field, you play the flute, and then... Of course you realize, this means... And just to add insult to injury, he then puts landmines everywhere and introduces the mine detonation mechanic. That's goddamn genius. So yeah, the game does a really good job of looking and feeling like a cartoon while delivering enjoyable, if occasionally a little bit frustrating gameplay. Really, when it's being a playable Looney Tunes short, this game is a lot of fun. But when it tries to shake things up though... For every great hilarious level, there's one where they briefly change the gameplay or where the task is so goddamn tedious that it just kills the overall premise. A major offender of this is the Hedge Maze level, where you gotta snag up batteries to catch ghosts in a Pac-Man style setup. The Pac-Man segment in itself is mildly annoying but tolerable, but once you get through it, you then have to dress up as a ghost in order to make it past them. Which you do via a broken ass rhythm game. Step on the brakes! Step on the oops, step, oops, oops. I absolutely could not get this fucking thing to cooperate when I wanted, and I swear I got through it by sheer luck. I don't know if maybe there was some input lag or something, but it was maddening. And maybe I wouldn't have such a problem with this if they at least gave you a decent beat to listen to, but no. You get this. Ah, oh, I'd rather be killed than become an actual ghost than get stuck in this shit again. Then there's the train level where you have to move stuff between stations, but end up standing around half the time just waiting for said trains to arrive. And that's not even mentioning these ice levels that are basically just overly long sliding puzzles. And then... There's level... Fucking... 10! This level, this level can absolutely suck on my carrot! It starts off with a segment of pushing some cannons around in order to piss off some bees and get them to attack Sam, which is funny in theory, but just translates to a tedious overhead sliding puzzle. And then when you get the sheep and head inside the castle, you get a boss fight with none other than Gossamer from before. I know! Sounds awesome, right? Well, I'm afraid it's sad confession time, so um, feel free to make as much fun of me as you want for what I'm about to say, but this boss fight, this boss fight in this children's Looney Tunes video game, 
took me an hour to beat. I know, I know, laugh it up, but just let me explain. On paper, this boss fight is super simple. You have to get Gossamer dizzy, then use his recovery time to jump on some platforms to shine some headlights on him that he's apparently afraid of, all while avoiding the shockwaves he makes and not getting close enough for him to clobber you. Do this three times and you win. Easy, right? Well, it would be if it wasn't broken to hell and back. Where do I even begin? Okay, let's start with the dizzy thing. There's a sign outside that says he gets dizzy easily and hates sunlight. Okay, cool, so run around him. Except the instant you get close, he pummels you and kicks you across the whole field, likely into the lava below, unless you hit the platform. No, it turns out that you had to use the dash. You know, that thing you almost never use in the whole game, to get him dizzy. Which he only does if you run a specific direction. That randomly changes between phases of the fight, all without actually telling you any of this. Of course you realize. This. Means. How the hell am I supposed to guess these things without some sort of sign? And it doesn't help that your dash has a wind up, so you essentially have to start dashing in midair after jumping over a shockwave to even get it to work at all. And when you do get him dizzy, you then have to get the sheep to press a button in order to make the treadmill platforms appear. But if you place that sheep even slightly wrong, it can stand around for a good 5 seconds before it even decides to press the damn button. And when the sheep does decide to press the button, good luck making the damn thing spin. Hit one of these platforms even one pixel wrong and you plummet to the lava below like a sack of potatoes. And now here's a little laundry list of the other issues I faced during this fight. The janky camera fucking around so much I fell into lava by walking straight. And taking random amounts of time to actually get dizzy even when I'm running in the right direction. Plus whatever the fuck happened here. Don't get me wrong, I love the idea of fighting Gossamer, and the game does technically tell you what you're supposed to do via this sign, if a bit cryptically. I get that. But this feels more like it belongs in Crash Bandicoot than it does in a stealth puzzle game. It's just not designed for it. And someone somewhere must have known that to be true, because this? This fight right here? This is the only boss fight in the game! The one positive thing I can say about this boss is that Gossamer has a big old cartoony band-aid on his butt after his tussle with a bull in the earlier level, and that is one of the cutest and funniest details in the whole game. So, um, kudos on that ass detail at least. Well, after that ordeal, as well as a couple other way too long and way too tedious levels, you make it to the end. And man, that's where things take a turn. In a great example of a brick joke, you end one level by launching a sheep into the sky. Only to then learn in the last level, after you have won the game show, that the sheep landed on Marvin the Martian's base and screwed up his plans to invade the Earth with his instant Martians. So for the last level, he basically kidnaps you and forces you to recapture 10 of his Martians that are running wild. What an awesome way to include a fan favorite character. And what a wonderfully boring final level! I'm sorry, but I just did not like this one. Again, the idea is fun and the first 4 Martians are fairly easy to catch, but soon enough it becomes a mess of mazes, electric walls, gravity puzzles, black holes that kill you if you get too close or too far away but are essential to progress, and oh my god, it just takes too damn long. Really, that's my main issue with the game. Because when you have some kind of idea of what to do, half the levels turn into genuinely hilarious interactive little cartoons. But if you don't know what to do, you can end up fucking around for hours trying to figure it out and have to do the same tedious tasks over and over again just to get another chance in the one part you haven't figured out yet. There are checkpoints, but man it can get grating. I have no idea how the developers expected actual children to figure some of these things out. And what's your reward for playing through all the levels, literally going to space and back and finally getting yourself a sheep? That's right. Realizing the sheep is actually Sam in disguise, getting the crap kicked out of you, and then waking up to realize the whole thing was a dream and go back to the usual routine. What a goddamn cop out! I know you can't let Ralph win because that ruins the joke of the premise, but come on, really? A dream ending? Why does this seem to be a theme with the games I pick? But is this all you do? Is there really nothing more to the game than just going through the levels? Well, there is some bonus content you can unlock by punching in on a hidden punch clock in every level and collecting points. And they can be surprisingly well hidden and require a bit of puzzle work to get to, which is nice. The things you buy with those points though? Well, there's some concept art, so that's nice I suppose. And there are two bonus levels, so at least you're rewarded with more game, but that's all they are. More game. They don't affect the ending, they don't offer any rewards, they don't introduce something new or funny. They're just that. 
two more random levels. And they don't even have the decency to just let you get to them easily. Even after you buy them, they're actually hidden. One by entering a level door from the other side, and one by jumping through a fake wall. Again, apparently a theme in my games. Come on, man, I earned those levels. Just let me play them. Look, despite all of my complaints in this second half of the video, Sheepdog and Wolf, or Sheep Raider if you prefer, is actually a really good game in a lot of ways. Assuming you're clear on what kind of game it is. It has a funny premise, it nails the Looney Tunes look and feel more often than not, and the core gameplay style is very solid and lends itself to a lot of humor and challenge. But it can also very easily become incredibly frustrating when it tries to get a little too wild, and there's a lot of PS1 jank that really could stand to have been ironed out somewhat to truly make it a great experience. But don't get me wrong, if you're a Looney Tunes fan or just nostalgic for the PlayStation 1 era, this game is absolutely worth picking up and playing. Just, um, you know, be prepared for some moments of massive frustration. And as for me, well, I think I'm done for the day. Good night, Ash. See you tomorrow, Ash. Hey guys, and thanks for watching this weird little Looney Tunes game review. Special thanks go out to Warren Miller, Silvermoon Ravenwolf, and everyone else who supports me on Patreon. And if you enjoy my work and want to support me too, there are links to my Patreon, Ko-fi, and TeePublic pages in the description below. And finally, if you're new to the channel, check out some of my other videos, and don't forget to subscribe to get more silly content in the future. Thanks for watching, and bye-bye!